Oh yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show and an incredible show that we're having already. We are just getting into it, but the conversations right now are something that I would encourage you to pay so much attention to. It is something that is affecting everybody right now. And we're talking about things like from the brink of despair to newfound resilience. And uh, we've got someone really, really important that's having a discussion right now, veteran performer and producer, Alistair Isobel. Now he's joining us in studio to bravely share his story of healing from a failed suicide attempt in 2023 and his new book broken deceit destruction divorce depression it's a loaded topic it's something that i think we can all learn from right now and i firstly want to say alistair thank you so much for joining us how are you <laughs> isn't this different for me not to be <laughs> and yeah, dancing i feel like i'm talking to a different person here, buddy. Uh, streaming soon on a platform near you yeah well i am a different person um and i to embrace and understand and accept that um having gone through this journey in the last couple of months and also accepting um that i've been an ill person for a very very long time unbeknownst to me because we never want to embrace that part of, of the kind of deluge of our lives. So here I am just being open about my story now. Um, and, so and overtly open yes. about it to the, yes. to the point of, of needing to put down a marker, a line in the sand, if yeah. you will, not just for yourself, um, but for other people around you. And I don't want to say just gents, because I think people assume that we are, are setting this in the context of men being broken under the pressures of, it's yeah. not. This is an emotional conversation. Mm. This speaks to love. This speaks to connection. This speaks to your childhood. This speaks to your cultural identity. Absolutely. That's quite a mirror to hold up if you're going to write a book about it. The responsibility comes to bear. So take us back to that moment. And as soon as the word suicide is mentioned in the space, and, and thank you for being willing to talk about that. That's a line that, that, that most of us have thought of at some point, but Absolutely. we've never gotten to that point. Yep. What was the tipping point for you? So I had, I had experienced an incredible journey as a, from a child and nine years old working in this industry right up until my adulthood and, and where I find myself at 50 years old now, where um, it was illustrious, it was amazing, it was it was successful, it came with its, its batons of beating and a host of other um, things, but I never ever understood that I was not only depressed about situations, but I was living a depressive life. Your baseline, um, yeah. Absolutely. Shelving it all the way, always being the part party trick, always being the person to make things right, always being uh, making sun where there was rain. Um, and, and I guess being being the person at nine years old, starting to earn, uh, being the earning powered person um, for my family, having to, to navigate through that from nine years old, taking care of a host of, of adults and family structures, etc. Um, at by, by 13 years old, you know, in, in, in being in Japan and having wonderful experiences with Stevie Wonder and Bonnie Tyler, BJ Thomas, and all these overwhelming things. 17 years old, you've got your own apartment in Johannesburg, you're living the life, you you start drinking, you start smoking, you're doing everything because you have money and no one says no to you. Um, and you're in every major musical and or success story that there is, but your story is not successful because no child is supposed to be working at nine years old. Yeah. And so when I see young people perform now and wanting to be catapulted into this world of entertainment, of fame. Um, I am just so panicked about it. I look at people today um, with respect to everyone that's doing it. You look at TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, and every, Everyone's rushing for fame. They are desperate to be validated, and they think that the fame is going to validate them. <laughs> I mean, they make soap up TikTok for that, and then create your own decent. What is that? And I'm going, guys. What are we doing with our lives? But what happened to me was, having gone through a multitude of different experiences, as we all do, um, I had um, gone through drink and alcoholism, etc., and never labelled myself because my thought was always. Um, how can you be a recovering alcoholic? When do you recover? <laughs> yeah. You must just get on with it, <laughs> yeah. because that's how you grew up um, understanding yeah, life to be. Suck it up. Um, and a very, very um, hectic life in my marriage also, in terms of the person that I was married to, an incredible woman, um, and a long-suffering wife in the kind of world that I found myself in. And um, I eventually kind of steered away from that, looking for something that I thought was better than what my marriage was. And a major event happened in my life, and I found myself um, hearing words by, by those around me that I'm delusional and delusional and delusional. And I'd gone through the panics and I'd gone through the anxiety. A couple of years ago, I had to go and see a hypnotherapist because I couldn't travel anymore. I couldn't leave my house, I couldn't drive, I couldn't do anything because 
Once I'd seen the hypnotherapist, he, he paralleled it to me during the apartheid years when I was beaten by the police at school, is that I then had to marry that, or I married that by, by my situation growing up. And I then became afraid of anyone in authority. So I lived with anxiety most of my life. Childhood trauma, um, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but by the time the, be the, the greatest betrayal happened in my life, um, having sought something else, um, found it, navigated through it, and thought it was bliss, and the betrayal of of that situation, I found myself questioning my, my mental state and did I create all of this on my own? Is any of this real? And one night on the 13th of September, I sat down, took 140 tablets and 18 beers and hurt myself very badly, found myself with did, lots of blood in my apartment. Did you want to Yes, die? absolutely. There was no, there was absolute calm for the first time in my life. There control, I suppose. There was a calm. little bit of control absolutely. for the first time. And, yeah. and, and I felt safe. Wow. I felt safe and I remember months before that one of my dearest colleagues and friends um, committed suicide and I'd had a few friends commit suicide over my lifespan and I always found them to be cowards and I hated what they did and I, I but when I got myself in that specific sp space I realized there's great strength because your innate desire is to survive and live. Oh, yeah, it's the strongest um, we have. And that yeah. night, I just found myself quiet, listening to the most beautiful version of Abba's The Winner Takes It All. And I realized that I'd achieved what I wanted to. I didn't want to um, show anyone anything more than what I had. And I didn't want anything more. And I wasn't... Um, angry at anyone or anything and I wasn't sad that I was going to be leaving my kids or my ex-wife or any of that or my siblings. It wasn't selfish, it was just I'd contributed, I'd lived, I'd done and I was satisfied. You needed a change, yeah, yeah. You needed to redirect. Um, thank you so much for opening a window into your world in the way that you are because I have to an absolute 100% certainty, certainty a feeling that there are those of you, those of us sitting here right now who are broken, who are reaching for answers, who might be creeping towards that very precipice. The bottom line is you need to, within yourself, set down that marker to make the change. It doesn't have to be big. It can be just as simple as getting out of bed right now and doing something slightly differently. But the bottom line is there are people you can reach out to and you can do it right now. Please speak to someone at the South African Depression and Anxiety Group right this instant if you need to reach out and connect with someone. 100%. Such pertinent advice right now and this conversation will be carrying on we just need to break away and try get some more inspiration from you Mzanzi and we have mm. been speaking to you throughout the morning about how you are making time for your mental health and obviously it can be challenging but it's those little moments like she just mentioned now that are oh so important so we asked you to let us know how you find time in your busy world to do exactly that and to share your voice notes and comments on our number 06340888863 now I've got to say thank you Mzanzi for coming through with so many comments right now which we want to share to hopefully encourage the rest of us out there. And we're starting with Mr. Ray J, who says, Good morning. You are absolutely right. Finding time for mental well being amidst the hustle and bustle of life is crucial. It's about weaving those moments into our daily routines like threads in a tapestry. For me, it starts with acknowledging the importance of mental health. It's not just another task on the to do list, it's a priority. So I carve out moments throughout the day, even if they're brief. Sometimes it's as simple as taking a few deep breaths in the morning oh, yeah. before diving into the day's demands. Other times, it's a short walk during a lunch break, allowing me to clear my mind and reset for the afternoon ahead. In the evenings, I make it a point to disconnect from screens and indulge in activities that nourish my soul, whether it's reading a book, practicing mindfulness, or spending quality time with loved ones. It's not always easy, and there are days when the chaos seems overwhelming. But even in those moments, I remind myself that prioritizing my mental well-being is essential for overall health and productivity. So I keep seeking out those little pockets of tranquility amidst the chaos, knowing that they're vital for my happiness and my resilience. Ray wow. Jay, absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. The bottom line, you've got to be conscious and you've got to be proactive about your mental health because very often when it comes to bear, um, it's once we've crossed a line. So please reach out to someone. To that end, here are a few options on what you can do right now. You are not alone. Your mental health matters deeply and help is available right now to you or for someone that you know who is in crisis. 
Call 0800 456 789 right now to reach a mental health professional or visit sadag.org to get that support. Now, in times of crisis, the Suicide Crisis Helpline is there for you at 0800 567 567. Don't hesitate. You are not alone. Help is here for you. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Yes, yeah, so welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast show and what an incredible show we are having right now. Again, I encourage everybody to pay attention to these pertinent conversations. Maybe have a note and pen around because there's some great sage advice coming through, especially if you're dealing with anything from mental health issues, anxiety, depression. We are here to help and assist you and hopefully this conversation can inspire you. Now, we are back with veteran performer and producer Alistair Isabel who is sharing his insights from his new book, Broken, and his mission to support men's mental wellness through retreats and advocacy and he's just uh, shared with us a pivotal moment and a turning point uh, which uh, took place not too long ago we just had a discussion and we're gonna carry on embarking on uh, I think the the, the the next phase in the step we were dealing with the decision that you took in 2023 yes. to potentially take your life to to end things we had just rounded that conversation up and uh, I think we were leading to more of a of a positive aspect yes. we, were, we were leading towards this, this healing, Alistair, the, the result of this decision and what happened next? Well, when I woke up and once they'd given me the charcoal and all of that to, to intake and to, to find out what damage has been done to my system, etc. And then moving to a clinic, a very private clinic for high profile people, I, um, I then had discovered that, that some of the patients had already told others and once they'd left the clinic that I was there. So it was the media, etc. starting to ask, has he been uh, put into a clinic for suicide and absolutely I had to take the narrative and, and I decided I'm not going to let my, my story be bastardized. Let me do own it, yeah. my own story. I did two interviews only and I was not going to discuss it any further because I needed to heal. Um, and confronting all these things from childhood to adolescence to an adult etc and confronting just my responsibility in all of this because it's, it's one thing to say that you are ill but what is your responsibility in it yeah. and all the collateral damage I had left with my ex-wife and my children and, and the role that I played in the in the journey that I'd, I decided on um, had to had to had to confront um things that I personally did, why did I not seek help? Um, is it okay to say because I didn't know I was ill? Now, of course you knew you were ill because you were destructive. Um, and, and post that whole scenario, I sat down and I could either have gone down the road of, um, of complete debauchery and being an alcoholic again, or going, what is gonna be cathartic and healing? And I looked at the mapping of my life and I was, first of all, there's so many questions and corridor conversations about what had happened in the last seven years in my life and all of that and I decided to put pen to paper and when I started it it was it was unstoppable um, I had just written from a point of point of peace and honesty and by means to say master lad when said amalai khuta sal kla gedun well it's never too late it's never too late to stand up and own your stuff and mm. go here I am I'm fallible I'm a human being and I am here to heal and I'm here to be honest and honesty brings a rare kind of growth and healing so I'd completed the book about my life and my journey and and it's not a memoir it's not an expose it's not a it's not a biography it's just my stories that's what it is and how I got to this point and where I find myself now I didn't know that this experience would get me to travel around the country and outside of the borders to go and speak to depressed people and to go and speak to people who are suicide survivors and to speak to people who who are finding themselves in the space of brokenness and so um, now I'm I'm being booked and open to 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 being brought to schools etc to speak to young people um, and speak to adults who are for the patriarchal system is so destructive because men are told you're not allowed to cry you're not allowed to be weak you're not allowed to do anything. I know of men who have gone to work for a year, who's lost their jobs a year ago, and they're just too afraid until the sheriff of the court arrives to collect everything. It's too late at that point. And then suicide spikes and all sorts of other things, and, and I'm here to go, no, we need to. And, and as much as it, it sounds um, unfair, but I can only deal with what men are going through, because I understand men. Um, and, and hence the reason I've started this men's wellness retreat. Um, you had to. You Absolutely. have to do something. Yeah. And I think that's often the expectation. I've found this within my own journey that you start to wear your pain like a badge of honor. Mm. It becomes the thing that allows you. So I would imagine there is, and I'm, I'm now also speaking to men because that's the, the, the experience of life that yes. I can only speak to. But you get to a point 
where it almost feels like you can't actually ask someone else. No. You've got to just get through it. And then you become so proud of yourself for doing that. You Absolutely. never let that go. Yeah. Now that you've started helping men in particular within the retreats and the talks that you're giving, how is that conversation shifting? Are men open to this? Are Without you starting to doubt. see a change? And, and I, I will say very strongly that, that the platform that I, that I have been blessed with um, has allowed men to go, well, if it can happen to you, then I'm okay to tell my story. And, and that for me is profound. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite, I'm, I'm so happy that, that my platform has allowed me to let broken people, men particularly, come and go, Alistair, thank you for telling your story. Um, because the world I, I existed in, um, which is such a nonsense world, yeah. um, is, is now just being pushed aside and going, no, 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 that's not important to me anymore. They've, they've experienced me as this glitz and glamour, but I was, I was having to trudge through that as a broken person. Now I want to sit down and go, it's okay. It's okay. How can I help you get through this journey? How can I put your hand in mine? I love that. And the bottom line is by putting your hand in his, you are also helping this incredible individual. Uh, but as has happened right now, the net result is we are all talking about this, having a very real, very authentic conversation about our mental health within the circle of friendship of brothers, and we are there to help. So we are going to keep all of the details of the talks um, that Alistair is going to be involved in there. You can see um, happening in June on the 28th, 29th, and 30th, Healing Broken Brothers. I absolutely love that. There is a hand reaching out to you right now. Sometimes just that small act is taking that hand. Don't do anything. Don't think of this as a mountain to climb. Just take the first step. You are not alone. Your mental health matters deeply and help is available right now to you or for someone that you know who is in crisis. Call 0800 456 789 right now to reach a mental health professional or visit sadag.org to get that support. Now, in times of crisis, the Suicide Crisis Helpline is there for you at 0800 567 567. Don't hesitate. You are not alone. Help is here for you.